Okay, so I'm not really big in terms of body structure or height or size. Uh, so bear me with me since I'm wearing a tank top right now. I'm trying to wear a wife beater to seem more Hispanic. Because I happen to be Hispanic. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. Alright, so... See, I'm on part 3 and 4 of the Patriotism and Nationalism series. I'm going to juxtapose them together and deal with some of the issues that I brought up. Now, we both know what I think about patriotism and nationalism. I feel like the passion you have for your nation can't be connected to the state because the nation is a very broad subject and uh, it's just large clusters of peop individuals and people that um, are so complex and um, not, not even if they're complex, you just can't associate with each other very well via Dunbar units. Whereas patriotism just has you love the state, but how do you love the state? Um, Odds are you will have some weird, fa absurd, arbitrary fantasy structure of the state. And it all shows that there's various different uh, ways that you can have preserved fantasy structure of the state. Nowadays we have a lot of realists who think, okay, so we actually need the state. Um, before, with um maybe early state capitalism, state mercantilism, uh, state feudalism, and slave states, it would be a situation where people didn't really, might not have desired a state, um, unless it was through religious intent, but there was a heavy modalization of the caste system. And this could either be the fact that you willingly accept your fate as a slave. And this isn't something that's highly old school. In the 19th century, the Mormon belief was that before the whole prophecy that changed it all, that only a black slave can go to heaven. And there's a lot of different theories and stuff that would put slave states into a sort of caste system. Uh, same goes for state feudalism, state mercantilism, and state capitalism. So, the concept of ideology, that states are idiocentric, you know, people have the mistake of assuming that there's a... Um, that just means that there's some absurd idealism that people think that the state's the solution to everything. And that's why a lot of anti-statists like to say stuff like, Oh shit, you guys don't have arguments for your views. They do have arguments for their views. Statists have tons of arguments for their views. A lot of them are roads and healthcare. That's a common thing. And laws, of course. Now, I'm faster here than normally. What I think is that for the anti-statist, uh, we want to prove that this ideology is meaningless. And um, nothing has meaning, really. Everything's just purpose. To deny this would be a is odd get fallacy. However, states have the tendency to act towards a more purposeful aura to it. But states are engaged in this, um, oh, sorry, I said purposeful aura, meaningful aura. That states are happy to associate themselves with something that's extremely meaningful. That States um, have this sovereignty principle, and uh, all else is meaningless, everything would be miserable without the state. Now, what anti statists can say is that through a purposeful outlook of society, you can tell that if you 
separate yourself from the state into more or less monocentric integrated system that things would be far better off for you in a purposeful manner. So in regards to uh, longevity of health, uh, this is prosperity, uh, if you're an anarcho-socialist, so various liberties for both sides, equitabilities, uh, and overall health, since status um, acts in a very unhealthy manner in regards to priorities and which groups gets the advantage. Or better yet, um, how markets are being less and less uh, open and warfare is becoming more uh, common as a result. So there's a lot of things you can look at.